evening, neonates. JB Illusion here with the newest clan introduction, never ending, never alone. Hmm. This isn't madness. It's all your secrets whispered to me at once. Malkavians. Mm. But there are gaps, missing scenes, blurred faces, and the murmurs of those plotting against me. Oh. Never ending, never silent, never alone. I'm digging this. The Malkavian or a very fun clan. Now what the... <laughs> So he made everyone fear for their lives? The Malkavians here. The Malkavians are the last clan, ladies and gentlemen. It definitely looks like they've got an intriguing character that they put forth in this trailer. He is a character who talked quite a bit about just visions. So the Malkavians whole thing is that they, they can see a little bit into the future. They, they get these hunches. They, they get this knowledge. But they can't really internalize the knowledge well. Something gets crossed up and a lot of Malkavians have mental issues as a result. Um, we've seen Jeanette and Therese who ha have some issues. I I'll leave that for everyone to replay the Empire of the Masquerade Bloodlines 1. Or if you haven't played it, go ahead and check it out. Therese and Jeanette are two of my favorite characters. They're both Malkavians who definitely have an issue that isn't really noticeable until you play further in. And we also have a character by the name of Devnull who shows up in Vampire of the Masquerade Redemption who talks in prophecy. And that upsets quite a few kindred or at least one that I can think of in the game off the top of my head but his information <laughs> despite coming out as this crazy prophecy and him just bouncing off the walls with things that seem like they don't really connect because of where we are we don't, we don't have his knowledge but he still helps us out and everything winds up I guess you could say not coming true, but everything is pertinent to our characters and assisting them in what they need to accomplish. That's why quite a few Malkavians wind up working for princes of the city, just because, you know, it's useful to have someone who can sometimes get that hunch that could be the difference between living another night or meeting the final death. So... The the pre let's let's take a look at the Malkavians because I love them so much, but I'm intrigued to see how they have been handled. Let's go over here. Well, this is that's lovely. I'm really digging the costume. Malkavians have been traditionally ostracized by Seattle kindred. That's sadly another part about their um, problems. While a few manage to claim territory in less desirable districts, so that's that's this zone. Basically, the Malkavians have kind of been pushed off into a derelict area, a not fantastic district to, to kind of set up shop. Very few have ever managed to rise to the levels of the other clans. Because of this, there is a persistent bias against the Malkavian clan that still exists in the modern nights. Oh man. Okay, so Seattle is not the greatest place to be a Malkavian. Let's check out the disciplines. Dementation? Haunt, which I'm assuming? We've got Haunt and we have Berserk. Okay, Berserk sounds quite interesting. Dementation, they can pass off... They, they can force others to go kind of mad whether it's to see hallucinations or i'm guessing berserk is just to have them go into a berserk range and start rage and start attacking people and we also have auspex or senses and psychic projection okay let's check out more about them in seattle malkavians let's see what's up malkavian whoa is that so they're they're in an abandoned I, is is this a warehouse? 
but they also have set up is that a model or is it or is that this character hmm is there maybe a malkavian who talks to no i was gonna say talks to mannequins or maybe that's them setting up something all the malkavians can be very intriguing now, Cavians have been traditionally ostracized by the Seattle Kindred, while few have managed to claim territory in less desirable districts. Okay. None of the many nicknames Clan Malcav. Lunatics, jesters, visionaries, madmen, and so on is as fitting as oracles, so they're definitely going to be putting that one first. They're not going to be focusing on the fact that they're lunatics or sometimes they do tend to play pranks <laughs> on unsuspecting kindred that maybe just maybe help them out yeah you open up the door to your haven and there's like little thumbtacks there so you're like you know what i'll come in the back door tomorrow because the malkavian's going to do something again and turns out you find one of your enemies you know waiting for you near the front door in an ambush little things like that hmm to be the clan is to understand things nobody else does and to be affected by that understanding among the clan. This shows itself in psychosis, depression, compulsive disorders, and uncounted other mental illnesses. This hasn't kept the clan of the moon from finding a place in kindred society, advisors, strategists, preachers, hunters, and yes, rulers, although apparently very rarely in Seattle. All Malkavians walk their very own path. Okay. Yeah, this gentleman is definitely an oracle, and he's not... J just the holes in bits and pieces of knowledge that he does not understand is definitely having an effect on his mental state. Hmm. Players who choose to join their ranks gain access to the secrets of two new disciplines, and on top of one, individual powers... From their thin blood past so we do get to keep one thin blood power okay let's check out dementation oh i love dementation so much all malkavians see further than a mortal could no malkavian is left untouched by what they see the signature discipline allows the clan's members to impart an imperfect version of their psychosis on others with with often drastic results so we have haunt the first active dementation power imparts an unseen specter in the victim's minds. Unable to control themselves, they'll try to flee in panic. The second and fifth slots upgrade haunt. So that's what we saw earlier on. It was the Malkavian creating a zone of, I guess you could say, madness where people saw things that scared them, that, that made them freak out and run away. That's what we saw. We also have Berserk. Okay. Berserk, Blood Cost 4, and Haunt's Blood Cost is 2. Not bad. Blood Cost 4 is interesting, though. I feel like that's a little bit higher than quite a few other abilities. The second active power fills the vampire's target targets, so there can be more than one, with an uncontrollable rage, causing them to lash out at anything nearby, even the air itself. So we could use this on one target or a large group. Also, um, in the previous video when we were talking about the Ventru, there, there seemed to be an ability that made, that could make us set up a, a nice little distraction. And Berserk, as, as well as Haunt, could definitely set something similar, similar to that up. Hmm. It, if no better target is available than the air. Okay. Fourth and fifth slots enhance Berserk. Use of Dementation while thoroughly unsettling is not a masquerade violation. Because it's just people freaking out in the streets, you know? I'm, I am I will have a lot of fun, I think, with Haunt or Berserk. Let's check out Auspex. We, we've seen that before. Nothing stays hidden to those who gain the discipline of Auspex. Their senses expanding beyond the boundaries of their bodies, these kindred slip ever deeper into their condition. Aura Sense, Blood Cost 2, Auspex's first active makes the vampire spot NPCs even through walls, which is really important. Because I'm assuming that if we know, oh, okay, let's say we're sneaking into a warehouse like we saw up above, and there's a couple guards. 
if we know that there's someone else on the opposite side of the wall, can we then use, um, would it be Haunt? Haunt, we saw, had a very large AoE effect. I'm not sure how far Berserk goes. But if we hit Haunt on the other side of that wall, will that affect the security guard who's on the other end? That we know is there because of all specs? Hmm. And mark individuals. That would be really intriguing. Staying aware of them even over long distances so we can mark certain people. It also reveals the weaknesses in the marked NPC's attack and defense. The second and fifth slots enhance or sense. We also have psychic projection, which is another question that I have. At three, blood costs two. The second active focuses the vampire's mind from their body untethered. They will explore the area in astral form, remaining free to use aura sight to mark any character they spot. Even more, the vampire's own senses have developed to such an extent that they may end up telepathically overwhelming the senses of others for a short while. Okay. Maybe we won't be able to hit Psychic Projection, pop up into a room, and then lay down a Berserk to take out our opponents for us, or at least to thin the herd, so to speak. It would probably be the Aura Sense plus Berserk or Haunt combination, but I think that that could be really powerful. Or at least I hope that we'll be able to do that through walls and other such things. We would have to see how... You know how the range of haunt and berserk work out ladies and gentlemen let's go back actually let's go up so what do you guys think about this zone because we didn't see too much about that is that a malkavian there is that a mannequin is this malkavian setting up like like some art display what, what do you guys think about this i'm assuming that the malkavian may live I mean, there's chairs and some other knickknacks around here. Would they happen to live in this, I guess you could say, warehouse? Would they live in this warehouse? What, what do you think's going on? Could they manage a warehouse? I'm intrigued to, to just know about this zone in the game. It seems like a really interesting place. And running into a Malkavian ally would be kind of nice. So, so let's see. We've got the Thin Bloods, we've got the Bruja, we've got the Tremere, we've got the Toreador, and finally we have the Ventru and the Malkavians who are not getting a lot of love. They're probably just, like in, in the hierarchy th of things, they're probably a little bit above Thin Bloods. They don't get respect, but when people need answers, I'm guessing the Malkavians get called up in Seattle. Hmm... I'm I'm digging the outfit that they put together for her. That's beautiful. But I'm just trying to think. The Toriador siding maybe with the Bruja as the Anarch faction. The Ventru siding with the or the Tremere siding with the Ventru. And then the Thin Bloods and the Malkavians are kind of just like in the middle. Or maybe they people don't care about them enough. To get them on either sides. I'm not entirely sure how the game will work out with the Camarilla, 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 and the Anarchs. Not really sure how that's going to play out, but I am intrigued to see just more of this one Malkavian character. What is he seeing? What future does he know of? And what things, what what holes, what what missing pieces to the puzzle are? his focus you know could it be our character not entirely sure tell me what you guys think in the comments down below i'm very surprised that it was not the nosferatu in in all honesty i, I did expect it to be the nosferatu but hit me up with what you guys think in the comments down below how do you think the nosferatu are going to be brought in along with some of the other clans that you might want for the dlc and tell me what character or what clan you're kind of want to going you kind of want to go into this game as i'm thinking malkavian um tremere or ventru mostly just so i could be a wild like boxing ventru who takes bullets and just other things to the chest <laughs> that's kind of what i want to anyhow thank you all for watching please be excellent to each other and good evening neonites <laughs>